Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Hello and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. Look who's joining us today, Michael King, resident of Hopkinton, of course. But really excited to have you here. I mean, you're such an interesting fellow, you know. Uh, <laughs> hello. 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 You're watch <laughs> but, you know, um, scientist, yep. um, a process developer scientist yep. for a pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you very much for serving on the Board of Health. You're welcome. <laughs> so, you know, that really apparently has sparked some interesting things that are going on in the health world. Yeah. Uh, for us at this well, time of year. Yep. This week in particular with the Board of Health has been very busy. Yep, we passed two big regulations this week um, to ban uh, single-use plastic bags and um, also to raise the age to buy tobacco to 21. So yes. that's a story. I mean, yeah. they're both great accomplishments, yep. but this raising the age to buy tobacco uh, products made national in news. Town. Yep. They, um, in town, yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, but thanks to a, a young man, fifth grader, yep. Logan Sullivan, his yep. name has been, been around. So. Have you gotten to know Logan? Or? So actually, I was not at the uh, open hearing where he spoke because um, my daughter was being born that day. Oh, well, yeah. good excuse. <laughs> oh, details. Yeah. But, um, I Congratulations. Read, thank you. The way. I, I read his letter. Um, so he wrote a letter to the Board of Health the meeting before that. And um, yeah, it was really cute. He said he wanted to come in and say his piece. And yeah, yeah. he's adorable. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And it, I mean, it was a statement that changed a law in town. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, it's huge. Yeah. And um, I know that um, Jennifer Flanagan and Lisa Whittemore are also on the Board of Health yep. with you. Mm -hmm. And um, Jennifer was sharing with me that um, Hopkins is a little bit behind the times in actually passing this law that um, more than half the towns in the state have already done this. Absolutely, yeah. And we're kinda, really? Yeah, we're trying to kind of just build up a critical mass maybe. And then same thing with the plastic bags. Make it's it a a statewide, you know, it right. can kind of become a, a yeah, law. Yeah, statewide law. Yeah. As of uh, when Hopkinton passed on Monday, yep. we became the 170th town to raise the age of buying t tobacco and nicotine products. Mm -hmm. And that includes there. like the vapor stuff. Va right. There's a weird you know, name for vapor. Jeweling. Jules, I've yeah. never heard that before. I've yeah. read the article. It's a little before my time, actually, or after my time, too. Right, right, um, right. When I was in high school and college, that wasn't really a thing, e-cigarettes and jewels. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of new, right. I think. Well, that yeah, well it's a big deal at the high school, Melissa yeah. says, that yeah. the oh, kids yeah. are vaping all over the place at the yep. high school because it wasn't against the law, so they could just be doing it. They yeah. had actually passed something at Hoppington High School this year. Yeah. Evan Bishop sent it out saying it will not be allowed. Yeah, and no, that's a huge problem in the high school. And actually, the Board of Health, um, we haven't done this yet, but we could levy a fine against somebody who has one of those who's under 18. So. Wow. Good. Yeah. Well, the, the research has come out, and it's actually worse than oh, absolutely. cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, it you is. Know, um, yeah. With cancer causing oh. and health issues. Yeah. Yeah. It's still smoking. That's what yeah. I thought. Yeah. Well, you're Just dripping oil on a burning filament, and it's putting like vapor into your lungs off of a burn uh, burning filament. So yeah, yeah. Ugh, sounds yeah. horrible. And then the plastic bag. So that's all retail establishments. Yes. Yeah. Um, we uh, based our law off of the language that uh, State Senator Eldridge used, and it's um, the one that is going to be on the books to go statewide, hopefully at the end of this legislative session, as long as the governor signs it. Good. So, Good. So, yeah. so Michael, how long have you been on the board of health? Uh, a year. Okay. Yeah. So what do you like most about serving? What, what have you uh, or enjoyed about I it? just like contributing to the town. You know, I think environmental issues in particular are really important. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of the stuff I'm more interested in is like the natural gas infrastructure in town, making sure that, you know, that stuff all works well and we keep the town healthy and clean. Yeah. Well, I am excited about the plastic bag ban. Um, there's so many alternatives. And, you know, I would love to see us get to a plastic water ban, a bottle oh, ban. Oh, yeah. absolutely, yeah. You know, using recyclables and, and just, you know. Now, question. Yep. The plastic bag ban, does that include the plastic bags that you put your produce into? No, so those are okay. not part of the ban. Yep. So, yeah, you can mm -hmm. still have the bags for meat and produce. Um, yeah, well, it's I encourage everybody to use your recycle. Cycle bags, they have them out there and use those yep. to collect your produce. Yeah. And, um, there's a lot of different ways. And really, most of the time you're doing it so that you can weigh it. Yeah. But yet, you know, you should wash it when you get home anyway. So it's not right. like really protecting right. it from anything. So will retailers then offer 
uh, paper bags, like at, you know, yep. price shoppers in CVS Re and whatnot? They can offer uh, recyclable paper bags. And actually, we have um, a provision in the law where they can kind of draw down the supply of plastic bags they already have. So it's yeah. not going to okay. be too much of an economic hardship. And, and it actually doesn't take effect till January 1st. Exactly. Ah, yeah. okay. But well, the tobacco one takes effect very quickly. It's right. actually July 1st. Yep. I love that. Yeah. 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 Well, and there's a lot of plastic-like alternatives to plastic mm -hmm. oh, bags. Oh, absolutely, yeah. There's so many wonderful plant-based. That's that biodegradable plastic. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, with all this aversion, and it should be, about plastic, I'm surprised at the, what, the seemingly uptick use of plastic in uh, carry-out uh, oh, I containers. I mean, back in the day, I mean, like, you know, at Asian restaurants, you mm -hmm. would get the little boxes. Yeah, uh, you know, absolutely. And now, all of a sudden, everything you take out yeah. is in plastic. Now, I, I'm like, I have, they're like gerbils in my house. Yeah. I'm always, you know. <laughs> well, even you know, at the grocery store 10 years ago, I remember um, I worked in a grocery store in high school. It, it was paper mostly. It yeah, was later paper. on that kind of switched over to plastic. Well, and I actually am seeing in certain locations, and I don't know if it's because of their laws, the takeout containers are paper. Now, I love that. Uh, yeah. You know, little little the little paper, bo well, paper the, box. Well, not like only recyclable the, cardboard, oh, but like the that, recyclable yeah. cardboard flip right. top tuck in. Yeah. Just yeah. like Whole the plastic, does but, that, I think. and that's and I love that. That's mm -hmm. actually becoming very prominent in Worcester, uh -huh. um, and the, uh, most of the delivery Down places the that do Grubhub Framingham um, oh, okay. are um, are doing that. That's yeah. nice. um, that delivery. That's good. But the one of the reasons that we actually reached out to you to come on the show was at Hoppington 101, yep. the Board of Health had a table, and yep. you were manning it, and you had information about ticks, yep. and they kind of suck. Yeah, they do. They do. They do. <laughs> Figuratively and, and then you And then you made a comment to me that kind of stuck saying, we are a tick town, and I didn't know what that meant. Yeah, so that actually yeah. is a new thing. So um, our health director wrote a grant to um, the University of Massachusetts Amherst um, for their zoological testing lab, so we can now send ticks that we find in Hoppington for testing. So we'll test for Lyme disease, anaplasmosis, babyosis, Powhatan's disease. What well, was the wow. last disease? Uh, Powhatan virus, it's called, yeah. actually. Wow. Yeah, so it's new. <laughs> go, so talk about this, because everybody thinks of Lyme disease, but there is an uptick in some incredibly terrible yeah. tick-borne diseases. So, um, the other two I spoke about, anaplas uh, anaplasmosis and babyosis in particular, they have like kind of a high comorbidity with Lyme. So once you're immune system's kind of knocked down by the Lyme's disease. These other pathogens that are in the tick will kind of take control, and they can be really horrible. So, yeah. wow. so the, what, what, yeah. what is meaning that we're a tick town? Oh, uh, Just that they'll take our ticks? Yeah, so we're part of but, a consortium now where we can send our ticks to that lab and they'll test them for disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does it mean we get extra help from the state outside of that? So we pay, um, it's, I'm not sure what the price is, but it's a kind of like a um, copay model. So like, let's say it'd be like $10 a tick or something. You can submit the tick and they'll test it after it bit you to mm. see oh. if it has any of those diseases. Should they be doing that everywhere? And is it just because you our ticks are worse? Uh, <laughs> or, or we yeah. have more Lyme disease so, or something? Um, the highest areas uh, for Lyme disease in the state are the Berkshires and the Cape, but like another kind of up and coming area over the past five years is the Worcester County, the Middlesex County. We're wow. one of the hot Yeah, spots. residential areas. So. so what should people do? Or I mean, I think we know some of the general things, but you know, it doesn't hurt to remind yeah. you. Anything else that you're... I mean, I think yeah. a best practice is to use, um, if you're gonna go into a wooded or grassy area, a bug spray with um, either DEET or um, synthetic, uh, it's a synthetic compound that starts with a P, it's from a chrysanthemum Pyrethine. flower. Pyrethine, that's it, yep. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then obviously after you get out of the area, you know, to check yourself and, you know, check your yeah. loved ones and take a shower. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know my husband is, is a big high, we'll use a very high percentage of DEET when yeah. he goes out and stuff like that. Is, isn't DEET bad for you too? It's safe, you know, according to the EPA, it's safe for use. I mean, I guess it's a trade-off, right? Would you rather keep the ticks off you or would you, you know, right. spray so something on you? The, th I, the habit I do is I will put it on when I know I'm going to take a walk or exactly. run in the woods. Yeah. Um, and then I shower afterwards. Yeah. And try to get off. Now, does it come off easily? I mean, it, or am I yeah. just thinking no, I'm no, helping no. myself? <laughs> if you use, you know, any surfactant soap, it should yeah. just wipe off. So. Plus, I, I do the, I'll spray it on my hands and wipe it around me versus, yeah, yeah, I'll do, so I'm kind of spreading it thinner exactly. than a direct hit. And yeah. the high density yeah. areas, you know, my feet. ankles, yeah. you know. So you yeah. cover your skin, not your clothes? Yeah. Or yeah, your clothes. I mean, I would spray your 
feet in yeah. advance too. Yeah. If we're gonna go into you our know, because they'll crawl up. So I yeah. I try to kind of do this area, but I'll do yeah. you know yeah yeah. And I do Gosh. actually. I take what it's on my hands and I'll wipe it down my dog so that yeah. You know, well, that's the thing. Go to the pets woods. get the yeah. Thing. That's so a are, big concern. are there resources people can do at their home? So like if they're just out in their yard, their kids waiting for the school bus. There's ticks out there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's not just walking through the woods. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. Are there things that homeowners should be doing? Um, so you can have people spray. Um, so a company can come and spray those two compounds around the perimeter of your yard. Um, there's also central mass mosquito control. They'll come and spray. Um, they come for free. They so will come for free. Yeah, they came to my house last year. We have year. them every year. It works wow. great. Um, they're spraying that compound that I spoke about before uh, to get rid of mosquitoes, but it also you know, it, will kill ticks. So. It does kill ticks? Does yes. it kill or, or repel? It kills them. Oh, it does kill yeah. them. I kill thought it repelled buggers. them. Yeah, no, it kills them. So cool. Them. Yeah. Cool. I, if they could know, take out spiders and snakes, too, I'd be I know, that would be wonderful. Right? No, yeah. Spiders <laughs> and snakes are good. Take a scary I'm, can of spiders there. I, is. Am, <laughs> I can handle snakes. Give me snakes every day of the week. Yeah. Spiders, but I have a healthy respect for what they do. And of they course. actually yeah. do kill a lot of the pests. Um, the other thing is possums and skunk seed ticks. Yes. Mm. And so even so we, though you're, you're recommending that we get possum and skunk pets. <laughs> get them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Have, have, yeah. A, have, yeah. A, have, a, have a little one in your yard. So do chickens. Chickens will eat ticks. Well, I have a big chicken in my yard. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> and if you haven't met Rex, the, um, right. So there are some uh, natural alternatives that people like to use, too. Mm -hmm. um, so you can put, like, garlic oil. Oh, I like rosemary. That idea. I heard is also a good they say repellent. Rosemary, eucalyptus, and lemon. I read. Um, yeah, uh, unfortunately, they'll repel them, but there's no, you know, scientific yeah. proof that it will actually keep them off you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. And I mean, I don't know if, how many people realize that this is a service to hop into the Central Mass Mosquito it's Control. It's amazing. That yeah. the town has been part of this for over right. a decade. Yeah. Mm. And you literally just call up. You get on a list, and. Um, they oh. just show up in the middle of the night, and spray. you can hear them out there yeah. spraying. How often like, do they spray? Well, they spray your whole yard? They, they, they come by on a truck in front yeah. of our house. Okay. So they do put it in the front. Like, like a, your house like yours, they would back down your driveway yeah. and do Whoa. it and, yeah. spray, and come in and out. We'll have that um, link on the website and, um, to, show, to share. And mm -hmm. it's something that is a service that the town of Hockington adopted many years ago. I don't know if the town pays for it, yeah. but someone's paying for it, and they come out. And um, nice. they are really nice on the phone. They book you right away. Good to know. Yeah. Very cool. Good, Good to, to know. know. And as a you know, anecdotal personal testimonial, uh, the year before we had them spray, it was like a you know, for mosquitoes, it was like a jungle in our backyard. And sure. like uh, July and August, we have a pool. After mm. like eight o'clock at night, you couldn't even sit out there. And then it was day and night difference the next year when you had them spray. You could be out there for as long as we had to be. So, wow. so the, Good to know. what happened this past winter with like it being very very cold and the cold keep happening. Does that mean that there'll be less ticks and mosquitoes or more? I think they said there was going to be more. So we had like a period of warmth in February and then it got cold again. Um, so like the water kind of like pooled. So we have a lot of vernal pools where like, you know, obviously mosquitoes will breed. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, they were saying this year it's going to be a lot worse for ticks as well. So. Mm. Ticks wow. are tough because they don't die easily. And they, I understand that they can go years without feeding. <laughs> yes. yes. You know, yeah. they don't need a host. Um, and they persistent. last more than a season? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They are not seasonal. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so where do they go in the winter? Like, they, they, go, host they go to Florida, they hang out in Naples. You know, they, <laughs> they're on the ground. They are in the ground. They're yeah. just hanging, oh, they you go know, in the ground. slightly dormant. But you know, you talk about some other things, host. too. So I think about, you know, in your field and yeah. your area of interest, what trends or air things that you are uh, either following, concerned about, or excited about? Um, in the town, I've kind of been keeping my eye on some of the natural gas stuff. So, um, you know, we have very good nat natural gas infrastructure in this town, but we still have, you know, a few low-grade leaks. They're not yep. dangerous, but yep. um, mm -hmm. it's something that I've personally been interested in over this past year, and I want addressed uh -huh. you know, in the near future. And that's the, the whole Wilson Gate, the Wilson... Yeah, they're not going to do that now. And then the one that was going to go over on West Elm Street. I yes, that that, that's the one they're not going to do now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if it's done right, it's safe. But, you know, we just want to keep the pressure on, make sure that they're well, taking care of Well, it is surprising how many um, gas leaks there are around the state. Oh, yeah. And, so, and, and you would think, well, gee, aren't they losing money? Because they they're are, losing yeah. the resource yeah. yet. Um, 
uh, you know, it's kind of a penny wise pound foolish yeah. you know, to build the appropriate infrastructure right. to take care of it. You kind of have to build your case too for these things. So they're very, you know, if, it, if it's a high grade leak, they'll come and repair right of away because you know you'll lose pressure down the line. But if it's a low grade one, you kind of have to like, you know, have heat monitors go by. You have to have sensors that'll detect the natural gas in the uh, soil. You know, you have to see if it's killing trees, and you kind of have to build your case to get them to repair these low grade ones around fittings. Yeah. So. Wow. So, so you just had a baby. I did. Yeah, congrats again. <laughs> just five days ago. Yep. Five days. And boy or girl? Girl. And Riley Ann King. Aww. Yeah. How much does she weigh? Uh, seven pounds, three ounces, Ooh, and 21 inches that. long. Oh. So you, and you guys are all home now. We are, yes. My wife's there with her right now. <laughs> so this is your first baby. It is, yes. So what is, is Welcome to fatherhood. I know. Has anything surprised you from what you expected in terms of being it's, a new dad? The energy that a newborn has. So the first <laughs> couple days, she she's great now. You know, yeah. I, I was saying to you guys before, she will sleep, you know, for three hours at a time. Oh, you're awesome. lucky. Yeah. yeah. But for the first couple of days, um, when she was in that cluster feeding mode, she would just wake up like every five minutes and cry and cry yeah. and cry until my wife fed her. And then like she'd feed her, we'd put her down and she'd wake up and cry and cry and cry. Oh, and so, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, but everybody's getting used to each other. Isn't that the interesting dynamic? Yeah. As yeah. you get to know the baby, baby gets to know mom and dad right. and the rhythms yeah. of the process. Oh yeah. my God, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Like the, the hazing period. For exactly, yeah. It was like initiation. Yes, and I will tell you, when, when things were tough, I would remind myself that millions and billions have gone before. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But when things were wonderful, it was I was the only one in the whole world that had ever had this happen. Right. Oh, they smile God. and they coo. Right, and, they, right. and I was like, ah! Yeah. yeah and I know I've, got, I've gotten to know you guys a bit um, over the last couple of years. Yeah. And I think the cutest thing is one is, you know, you've really gotten invested, both you and your wife have gotten invested oh, in the community yeah. from being high school sweethearts in Upton yep. to getting married <laughs> yeah, to we moving here to yeah. um, really, like, you got a, you got involved in um, a different committee before Board Guys, of Health. advisory committee, yep. I immediately, yeah, basically. Yeah. Like, My wife did, too. She did uh, capital improvements. You were, yeah, like, yeah. in town, lovely. like, a couple yeah. months and really raised your hand to yeah. get involved. Yeah. Um, and until... And she's still currently a member of the library trustees Absolutely. and, and yeah. ran last yeah. night. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's really neat seeing young people coming in, Absolutely. young kind of energy and people yeah. really wanting the best for the town. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, we're super invested in the community. You know, we want the town we live in to, you know, kind of be a reflection of, you know, what we want, you know, yeah. where we want to live. So. Very Did you grow cool. up doing that? I mean, you know, that's wonderful. Many people don't. I mean, to think about just jumping in right away. And um, like in that. college, I was uh, active in student government. Okay. Um, so I didn't grow up doing it, but my father was a history teacher at the high school, so I heard a lot about, you okay. know, getting that's involved. Cool. And, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I didn't think we knew you and your wife were high school sweethearts. Yes, we really are. Cool. <laughs> that's that. really With prom cute. dates and all that? Yep. <laughs> 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 so, you know, parents out there, if you've got a son or daughter dating or what, whoever dating, You never know. You never know. <laughs> never know. Um, That's adorable. Well, I mean, yeah. In my high school class, um, we, I think it was 108 of us that graduated. Four couples are married out of it. Oh, I, wow. And stuff like it's small towns. It's, I it, think that's it's, what it is. It is. Yeah. It's yeah. small towns. You, you get close friends. And you've been friends since, like, Forever? first Forever. grade. Forever, yeah. It's Aww. stuff like that. So it kind of just that's, that's develops cool. like that. Her mother was actually, so my father was a teacher in the high school we went to, and her mother was a chemistry teacher in the same high school. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we kind of had that connection, too. So, so uh, I know Jessica's not here, but what, what is her background? I mean, you, you're, you said your yep. degree and everything is... Yep, I'm a process development scientist. Uh, Jess actually is in um, biotech as well, so she's she manages scientist. the quality control lab at LabCorp, and they do uh, testing for um, newborn screening. Oh, wow. Yeah, genetic testing. That's wonderful. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Nice. Two so. scientists. Probably yep. some scientist baby. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot going on in the community. Um, yep. I know that Monday night, EHOP is doing the Know Your Vote. Yep, I'll be there. And stuff yep. like that. And that's that great. Yep. That preps people for actually town meeting that's coming up yeah. a week from Monday. Oh, I mean, my May. nickname for it May is the, yeah. the, the Carnival of Democracy, but it's oh, definitely yeah. coming up. Trademark and um, It's a gauntlet. Um, <laughs> you know, I got a glimpse of the amount of articles, and it is intense. Yeah, it it's is. It's intense this year. Just How reading many it. Articles? Would, yeah. At last glance, I saw it was 47, but a couple of them have subsets. Subsets, yeah. And yeah. one subset is huge. Oh, and, my goodness. Uh, but I don't, um, Oh, that's a great build up. Come to the EHOP meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you actually a, know, yeah. you know what's going what's on. Going I mean, on yeah. And there's some big issues, whether it's turf fields, downtown corridor. Yeah. 
money, um, money, money. Budgetary coming up issues. and um, budgetary issues coming up. But um, even um, in tonight, there's um, the Fantastics are at the high school. Yes. And that is a almost like a small black box production. It's about um, the audience is only for about 50 to 75 people, mm -hmm. and uh, th I actually had a meeting behind there last night for cultural council, and they had a performance last night. The music is phenomenal. I'm planning on going tonight. Wow. What do you mean black box? It's a, it, 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 a meeting small smaller. Video? So it's ah. a small print. This is actually produced and run directly, c completely by students. Okay. This is a student production as part of a senior's um, um, production, and um, the music is amazing. Ah. Um, so the Fantastics and then, tonight. And tomorrow, tomorrow is the, oh, we, is oh, the oh, Whitehall yay. Artesians tour. And I know we were at um, Three Chicks Farm um, a couple of weeks ago. With two of the artists. With two yeah. of the artists promoting it. One location, actually, if you have the map, will not be open tomorrow, and that is location to um, Gretchen Stevens' um, White, um, Whitehall Farm Studios. Won't be open tomorrow, but th this is a the blast rest if you guys yeah. go to this. It's a fun um, way to get to know how people go to the back roads, go to different homes. Well, it's all, all kind of loops around Whitehall, yeah. which is a really pretty Beautiful. area. Yeah. Um, but... But the swap, and that, um, that's the PTAs. It's the hop swap. It'll be at the high school tomorrow. They're still taking donations today, um, three to five at the high school. Um, and it's kind of—I mean, I haven't gone in years because my kids have kind of aged out of it. Your kids have aged out. Of it. You'll be going in a You'll couple. Be going years. You'll be going <laughs> in a couple. Like, wait a second. You know, here are our old shin guards for soccer. Do you have the next size up? And that's you know, right. it, yeah. it's, it's basically a great well, big yard sale it's, of it's people a, recycling yeah. things together. There's yeah. no buying. It's just swapping. Is that? There's some buy. There's some buy. There's some buy. But the um, that's going on tomorrow, and that'll be up at the high school. And then there's um, um, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. There's a take the drug back day is, oh, that's is right. also tomorrow. That's um, right. I don't know if Hopkinton take, is. Oh, slow down. Take the what back? It's taking Unused prescription pharmaceuticals. Oh, drugs okay. back. Oh, Old good. aged out pharmaceuticals. Yeah. So. You, yeah. Oh. Okay. Um, and then, um, and that, I don't know if Hopkinton is doing it tomorrow, but the Holliston Police is absolutely yeah. doing it tomorrow. So people can take oh, all okay. prescriptions, things like that. Yeah, really um, that. And yeah. we are definitely an arts town between the Fantastics tonight, Artesians tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Also starting tonight at the middle school is Annie. Oh, that's right. And, if you, and you know, it's the right. funnest thing, yeah. uh, funnest production. And when, um, you know, the productions here at high school and middle school are amazingly professional for students. Oh I mean, gosh. you know, you think, you know, from people, I mean, locally folks know this, but, you know, I know my friends from around the country, they go, well, you know, kids do it. I'm like, no, you have to see, they're, it's so good. They're so talented. And then, um, you know, this past week was uh, Meet the Candidates Night. You couldn't be there. I could not be there. But, you know, yeah. Leslie Ficari, who's running for yeah. Board of Assessors, actually read, his, read Michael's candidate statement and held up a picture of the baby. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which, was very, very, which, was, which was very, very cute. But the um, um, a w big shout out, thank you to the Women's Club for hosting that yes. every year. It, is, such a it really job. is a really informative time in the fact that then, and to see um, Kathy yeah. Hebden, you know, take on the torch from um, Nancy Clark for so many right. years. They it do a fantastic job. It was great. And, um, they really do a fantastic job. Yeah. I I do want to take a moment also to recognize the fact that the community had a huge loss in the last week or so, and that was the loss of Cindy yes. Chesmore. I mean, oh, I was yeah. a past board member of the Hopkinton um, Friends for and the Seniors. Just to say, her former um, director for of many years of the For 30 center. years for 30 of the years, Senior yeah. Center, and um, there's Lovely probably woman. not a piece of this community she hadn't touched right. or advocated for, from youth to CCD to, you know, for, and for 30 years at the Senior Center, right. from taking the Senior Center, and it's a huge loss to this community. Yeah. Um, no. yeah, and it's, it's you know. But otherwise, yeah. it's uh, finally, day. it's spring. Yes. It's spring. spring. It's spring. It's, I will tell you, <laughs> earlier this week, I was driving around, and I felt like it's still winter. Things really weren't blooming. The trees hadn't burst into bud, very few right. flowers. Today, I driving in here, so so many trees blooming, so many flowers out. Like all that rain for the past few oh days. Oh my yeah. goodness! Now the sun's out. Well, Finally. Yeah. I mean, getting past Marathon Day, you, you oh, felt like it, like it was horrible. Right. We haven't talked That's about right. That. We yeah. haven't. We haven't met. I the worst went marathon to, weather wise ever. Yeah, and I went to the wonderful. You went, did you go to Spectacular? I did, and I was no, there earlier before yes, you. Yes, you okay. went as well. And there were some great diehard fans. The music was amazing. The yeah. food trucks, um, I felt so badly for them because there was a 
a nice enough crowd, but certainly not what, what it would have been in the good weather. That's a hard so I overbought and over ate because the food was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it was, it was funny when I was there. Um, the winds had picked up really oh bad. Goodness. And yeah. I, was, I was there late morning. I went there for the hot acoustics. And I'd been at the silence. start right earlier before that. I went from the start up to hear hot acoustics. And poor Anzios had to keep closing down yeah. because um, with high winds, it's hard to keep a fire going making yeah, pizzas. Pizza, so they, yeah. um, and you know, Jennifer from the Board of Health and you guys are running around down at the common up there yep. because you guys have to actually certify all the food vendors. Yeah, right. And so the weather is horrible. And you know, between that, they have to be at um, Athletes Village. Right. Board of Health is. People don't even realize yeah. the intricates of right. like, what these cool. other departments yeah, have to do touch. for every of these yeah. events. And that's including like poly arts, the yeah. concerts on the common, all yeah. that. that these yeah. guys are actually out there like signing off, checking on them. They're, wow. they're very active the in the marathon community. The marathon was a tough yeah. day for everybody, but the, I really hope they do the spectacular again next I year. I hope they will. Because so. it was pretty amazing. And on a fair weather day, I just know it'll be a mob Even scene. Even if it hadn't been just monsoon rains like that, oh, if it'd just been cold or whatever, that still would have oh, been yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. If it had been cold, it would have right. been fine. Yeah. But that yeah. combination of cold and torrential, torrential not right. just yeah. not just no. spitting. It yeah. was buckets. Well, half the elite runners bailed. I mean, that's the first time ever. Well, not half. They said. Yeah, yeah. they said yeah. half. Yeah. And oh, by the way, yeah. I am so impressed. I've decided American women are, we are made of really <laughs> tough metal. <laughs> The number of American women that finished that in the finished, top ten, yeah. mm -hmm. and and one was not even a seated runner, placed fourth, and great stories, um, just yep. so impressive. Well, you know, congrats to the uh, women in Hopkinton and men who who ran, ran and, 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 runners, and actually including, including Denise, Denise, who's producing the show, show right now. Go yeah, Denise. Denise. shout out to Denise. Denise. She <laughs> ran. But, um, Mike, we actually want to wish you well on the election. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we we'll, we'll yeah. appreciate everything you've been doing on the Board of Health. Thank you. Um, congrats want, again. On thank the you for trying to protect yeah. baby. protecting us in ticks. And thank congratulations you. on Riley, to you and Jess. Thanks for being here. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks thank you all for joining. See you next time. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, a family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org.